Welcome to DIY Ace. Uh, I want you to do something for me, please. I want you to crank up your volume and I want you to listen. That is the sound of silence, which is blissful in the right circumstances, but it is absolutely not blissful when you want to do this. For some bizarre reason, uh, this Land Rover Discovery 3 has decided to be silent on me. I turn the radio on, I turn the volume, I get full reaction from the buttons, but I get absolutely nothing coming out of the speakers. Um, it's got a very clever uh, system uh, built into this car. It is set via a fibre optic network and there is a whole box of tricks underneath the driver's seat, but I'm not going to rip it open. Uh, there is an expensive repair uh, or a cheap repair with some level of risk attached to it. So I'm uh, going to show you a quick fix for this. Now, hopefully it works. If it doesn't work, frankly, I'm not going to upload it. So by the weird peculiarities of the space-time continuum, uh, uh, by the virtue of the fact you're watching this, suggests that this thing will work. So I'm going to try it. Rightio, once you've got the battery cover, there's a plastic cover that comes off here, you have got the battery in front of you. Ignore this for me, that is an auxiliary uh, cable that I've installed that goes to the CTEC battery charger that I use, uh, which is a godsend, you should get one. Um, positive, negative, don't touch them together for obvious reasons, you'll end up with a bit of a weird hairstyle afterwards. Um, first things first, a couple of safety things. Um, I have opened up both driver's side and passenger side windows, um, and I've also shut all the doors, including the tailgate. Um, the reason I've opened the window is pure and simple. If something goes wrong, I'm not locked out of the vehicle. Um, the engine is off. I've turned the ignition off. I've waited at least a couple of minutes just to let anything run through. We're going to be attacking the negative terminal first. So 13 mil spanner, pretty self-explanatory. Nothing overly complex. You don't need to take the nut off entirely. You just need to loosen it sufficiently so that you can pull the terminal off in one fell swoop. Try and do a nice clean break. Uh, rather than hovering it around because you'll get a lot of arcing between it, but um, that's fine. Make sure that's nice and clear so that you've not got any issue there. Loosen the positive as well, and rather simply, it will pop off. Um, negative one's got a reasonable amount of play in it. Um, what we're going to do in principle um, is connect this one and this one together rather simply. Um, we're not going to put the battery terminals together. I do not under any circumstances connect the terminals of the batteries together. It will be a disaster. We're going to be connecting the positive and the negative together. We're not going to do it though for at least 10 minutes. You've got to let any residual current in the system drain out. There's things like capacitors all over the place, any of the electronics. You just want to let it just die down, let, let it settle. So give it 10 minutes. I'm going to come back to you uh, in a second and we'll uh, connect them together using a nice jump lead. It's also worth noting um, that if you have any kind of auxiliary battery attached to this, so plenty of these cars have been adapted to have secondary batteries put in for running things like uh, fridges when you're camping, uh, extra electronics in the way of radio systems, uh, navigation systems, supplementary uh, audiovisual stuff. So if you've got a second battery or if you don't know whether you've got a second battery, um, don't try this, please, because you've still got the other one connected. So just double check these things, okay? This is not for the faint of heart, but uh, should be fine if you know what you're doing. So there we are, I'm back after about 20 minutes or so. I'm gonna use this piece of timber, just wanna protect the battery terminals from under there. We don't wanna let anything potentially short this out, it'll be an utter disaster. Um, when we're sure we're in there, I'm gonna use a decent set of jump leads, nice positive connection on the positive terminal and a positive connection on the negative terminal, quite literally and metaphorically. Um, couple of limitations for this, please. I wouldn't do this on anything other than a 2000, uh, than a Discovery 3, sorry. Um, this one is a 2005 model. You should be fine on all the Discovery models. Um, Discovery 3 models, but uh, limitations on the Discovery 4, I think post model year 14, 2014, there was a stop start introduction. Um, I wouldn't want to test it on that, frankly, I wouldn't want to break it, but if you're happy to take the risk and happy ultimately uh, to uh, suffer the financial distress, if it does go wrong, then great, have a go. But um, uh, for me, uh, this should work fine, 2005 Discovery 3. We'll leave those on there for a few minutes, uh, see how it gets on and come back to it. Yeah, another few minutes gone, so let's see how we get on. All 
Right, now first one to go back on, positive terminal. Get it nicely seated. And over tighten it. It needs to be pretty good, but don't destroy it. Now the trick again with the negative, try if you can get a very decent, nice solid purchase on it um, as soon as you can. You don't want to sit there with it arcing all over the place. Um, if you attach it and you get a little arc, it's fine, it'll spark, it's bound to do that. But if you, it suddenly goes mental and it all starts melting on you and the rubber, then you know <laughs> there's something seriously wrong. So uh, just run away. Uh, but there we go. Nice, decent, positive connection. Do her up. And we will see whether we can, in one take, one swift move, get this working again. So you know there's no magical trickery. Let's have a look. Let's get back inside the car. See if I can find a neat spot for the camera. Right, we have ignition. Let's try the foot on the brake and the engine on. She's running. And bizarrely, I now have lost all control of the radio. Oh, there we go. Oh, would you believe it? Look, get involved, have a little guess. What a joy! Kiss FM UK. That has just saved me however many hundreds of pounds of auto electrician time and the gubbings underneath the seat being replaced. What a result, I've lost my clock time, but bizarrely, in spite of the hard reset, I have maintained, forgive me, I have maintained my radio presets, which is bizarre. I am over the moon. I can have music in my car for the first time in weeks. What a simple fix. Um, I am over the moon. I can dance along like a moron in traffic singing to my heart's content. So yeah, delighted with that. Quick fix, enjoy.